John Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm presenting some brief lectures and commentaries on topics from the courses I teach in literature and cultural studies. This particular installment is the third in a group on Joseph Conrad's novel, Heart of Darkness. In earlier webcasts, I said some things about Conrad's relationship to the fin de siècle malaise, the growing disenchantment with the ideals of the European Enlightenment among artists and intellectuals at the end of the 19th century. Here, I'll turn to the novel itself. But first, some biographical background on Conrad. Conrad was born in 1857 in a part of the Ukraine that had been part of Poland, but was then a part of the Russian Empire. Conrad's parents were Polish aristocrats who were living in exile because of their anti-Tsarist views. Conrad's father taught him literature and languages. Conrad was fluent in French as well as his native Polish as a child, but he was orphaned at 12 years old. Nonetheless, under the guardianship of an uncle, he was well educated in boarding schools in Krakow and also in Switzerland. At the age of 17, he left school to join the French Merchant Navy. Then after a short time, he joined the British Merchant Navy, where he served for 18 years. Through this experience, exposing himself to many different cultures around the world and living among the working class as well as the aristocracy, Conrad was distinctively cosmopolitan. And when in 1894, he would become a writer, he decided to write not in Polish nor in French, but in English. Although Conrad's plots stem from his own experiences, they're not simply autobiographical and they're not simply realist narratives. Conrad's novels are concerned with the moral bankruptcy of modern society as it is revealed by the excesses of capitalist greed. But Conrad is not exactly a champion of the exploited and downtrodden. He is concerned more typically, as in Heart of Darkness, with the effects of capitalist greed and colonial exploitation on European society itself. Conrad's novels, including Heart of Darkness, are typically structured around mythic concerns including the hero's quest. In this, they can be compared with other literary texts we've been reading in this class, such as Beowulf and Paradise Lost. In Heart of Darkness, Conrad's hero and narrator, Charlie Marlowe, is radically alienated from his contemporary society. But he doesn't act to change it. In fact, he struggles to comprehend it. This sense of Alienation and helplessness in the face of moral decline is also a characteristic feature of modern fiction. Although Conrad's narratives clearly stem from his own personal experiences, they are not exactly autobiographical. Instead, Conrad's style is richly and complexly symbolic. He makes his realistic narratives illuminate the moral and ethical contradictions of modernity just as those contradictions are coming into historical focus during his lifetime. Citing the critic Ian Watt, Kevin Detmar, and Julie Wick, the editors of volume 2C of the Longman Anthology of British Literature, put it this way, Conrad's experimentation in works like Heart of Darkness result from his own personal experience, a personal experience of travel, exile, and solitude that was a radical premonition of the conditions of modernity. And they go on to say, Conrad's style is distinctively visual in the way in which he represents shades of meaning through the visual effects of his descriptions. They write, in Heart of Darkness, events cast a visual glow and haze where meaning can be found only in the most subtle shades and ambiguous highlights of language. The reader must participate in the gradual and partial process of accumulating meaning. They point to the following passage from the opening pages of Heart of Darkness, where Conrad is introducing Marlowe and his friends sitting on the deck of the boat in the Thames. Conrad writes, The yarns of seamen have a direct simplicity. 
the whole meaning of which lies within the shell of a cracked nut. But Marlowe was not typical, if his propensity to spin yarns be accepted. And to him, the meaning of an episode was not inside, like a kernel, but outside, enveloping the tale which brought it out only as a glow brings out a haze, in the likeness of one of these misty halos that are sometimes made visible by the spectral illumination of moonshine. So Marlowe and his friends are sitting on the deck of a ship at dusk in the Thames, talking about nothing in particular. But Marlowe is deep in thought. He's thinking about what it must have felt like for a Roman soldier invading Britain in the first century, someone coming from Rome, center of European civilization at that time, to Britain, which must have seemed a wild, dark, uncivilized, frightening place. And he suddenly speaks. And this also has been one of the dark places of the earth. Notice how Marlowe's description of a young Roman soldier sent as part of an invading force to Britain in the first century foreshadows what we will learn of Kurtz's experience in the Congo in the 19th century. Marlowe says, Think of a decent young citizen in a toga. Too much dice, perhaps. You know, coming out here in the train of a prefect, a tax gatherer, or a trader even to mend his fortunes, land in a swamp, march through the woods, and in some island post, feel the savagery, the utter savagery, had closed round him. All that mysterious life of the wilderness that stirs in the forest, in the jungles, in the hearts of wild men. There's no initiation either into such mysteries. He has to live in the midst of the incomprehensible, which is also detestable. And it has a fascination, too, that goes to work upon him. The fascination of the abomination. You know, imagine his growing regrets, the longing to escape, the powerless disgust, the surrender, the hate. The narrator recognizes, with some resignation, that he's about to hear about another one of Marlowe's inconclusive experiences. On that point, I'll conclude for now, but I'll pick up this thread to discuss some specific passages from Heart of Darkness in a subsequent video. As always, if you have questions or comments, send me an email. Mm -hmm.